Hey, this is Class Creatives, and in this video, we'll discuss how the Captain America series uses state-of-the-art workflows and visual effects software such as Autodesk Maya for animation to produce award-winning visual effects for its most recent installment. Most of our students are curious about the software and techniques that were used to bring these record-breaking movies to life throughout each installment. We'll take a look at how Captain America has evolved over the years with technological advancements and how the characters and the universe are created. In this video, we'll discuss how these award-winning effects are made by the best studios in the world, paired with state-of-the-art tools such as integrating 3D assets with practical costumes to enhance the superhero characters, how characters are physically transformed on screen, how critical design choices are necessary to adapt the comic book superhero to the big screen to engage a modern audience, and how all of the elements are assembled together to create some of the most iconic superhero characters in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> The initial designs for Captain America were based on the comics, but needed to be redesigned for the big screen. The directors were tasked with designing the classic Captain America costume with modern day updates. The pirate boots and the cowl on the hat were removed due to practicality. They sought out to show the costume in the movie two different ways to contrast the modern design and also portray the evolution of the costume that would have a fighting superhero battlesuit element applied. The final cap costume also contained materials that would be relevant to what was available in the 40s to keep the functional authenticity. Multiple tests and designs were conducted to ensure that the suit not only looked great but could function on set allowing the actor to move as naturally as possible while wearing it. The helmet had a mix of high and low tech customization to be custom fitted to the exact specifications and features of the actor. They opted for the circular design of the shield so that it could be thrown, bounce off the ground, and boomerang back which were all visual aspects that enhanced the weaponized prop. Since the shield was made of vibranium, the directors needed to create different versions of the shield, metal, rubber, magnetic, and CG for specific purposes in the film. Chris Evans came up with different ways to throw the shield and catch it for the CG moments to enhance the action. They wanted it to not look like a frisbee or a boomerang, but have a special arc with which it interacts with the environment. They aimed for all the designs to be right for the story and right for the character. For the first installment of Captain America, it was critical to the directors to convey Steve Rogers as an extremely skinny individual before attaining the superhero build later in the storyline. They wanted to show a transformation that had not been seen before in other film productions. Rather than focus on the transformation itself, the creators wanted to show more of who the man was before and after the transformation takes place. Initially, the creators thought that the movie would not be very visual effects driven. However, during production, they soon realized that they would need between 14 and 1500 visual effects shots for the film reshaping Chris Evans' body, frame by frame for the first one third of the movie. Due to time and complexity, they couldn't have him diet and bulk up in real time, so it was all done in CG, which also allowed him to directly interact with all of the actors on set without a stand-in or body double. They created a series of tests to show to audiences with different body types. Most audiences were questioning how they added the muscles, rather than the visual effects that removed his muscles, making him thinner, confirming that their test was convincing to test audiences. Some shots would require a three-shot process where Chris Evans was shot, then his skinny body double, and then a clean plate. Some shots would require a green screen or a shot of his double with tracking markers on his face giving the visual effects team as many options as they needed to make the shots look as realistic as possible. The process was not a global scaling adjustment, but a painstakingly detailed process of adjusting all of the body parts and features of his face to make them look anatomically correct on screen. For the villain Red Skull, the directors wanted him to be scary but not grotesque, while being graphically iconic. They also wanted the actor to pull off the character that would not be campy or cheesy, but downright frightening. The character designers targeted an anatomically correct villain that had a realistic transformation. Early tests with the prosthetic fitted to Hugo Weaving's face were conducted to confirm whether the mask would appear naturally on camera. It would take three and a half hours for the mask to be fitted for the daily shoots. Latex was used on the mask to give a slight glow, giving the character an additional unique touch. There was enough flexibility in the mask that Hugo could even act out his iconic eyebrow arch. The character took a delicate balance between realism and the designs from the comic books. Visual effects was used to enhance and stylize his look, as well as remove the actor's nose to leave the open cavity of skull displays. Thinning his lips, squaring off the jaw, darkening the sockets in the eyes, and removing gaps in the teeth 
were some of the additional subtle adjustments the visual effects team took to bring the character to his final look in the film. Hey, Lydra. Physical sets were used that matched the detailed 3D model to complete the futuristic space. Captain America's shield and Bucky's arm were digitally constructed during their fight sequences. The film's climactic battle was performed on a set in front of a green screen as well as several other stunts seen in the movie. For daring jumps, the actors were replaced by CG doubles and vehicles. For shots viewed through windows, flat effects were layered together rather than creating a simulation for effects such as smoke and fire. ILM was tasked with updating the futuristic aircraft helicarriers, which were predominantly all CG generated with hundreds of smaller models. The textures alone were four times of what was required in the first Avengers movie. Details such as the jets falling off the helicarriers were painstakingly detailed by the visual effects team. The crash scene started with detailed models of the carriers with explosion effects added. For the jet crashing, several layers of models and effects were necessary to complete the shot, such as the shattered glass on the vehicle. Some shots required all visual effects, including CG character doubles, such as this shot where Falcon was shot on green screen and then replaced in a 3D set, which only took place on a very small portion of the building being shattered from the collision impact. Several layers were composited together to create the complicated visual effects shot sequence. Entire backgrounds were constructed digitally where life-size jets were needed, further enhancing the shield throwing sequence. A crumbling effect was created when Black Widow removes her disguise. Subtle visual effects included the placement of Chris Evans' face over his body double when he was wearing the Captain America mask. For the third installment of Captain America, the director sought out to build upon how audiences all around the world embraced the sequel, and do things that would have incredible impacts on the films that would follow, in addition to making something entirely distinct from what they had done in the first two. They focused on two critical components of the comics that would involve Iron Man, highlighting the core conflict between them driven by their differing philosophies and personal experiences. Fight sequences were highly choreographed and strategically placed in the movies to enhance the storylines. The Bucky apartment chase sequence mixed practical shots with CG elements and special effects. Red Wing was created in full CG and was blended with practical suits worn by the actor. A backlot was created to allow the directors to film with complete freedom throughout the environment. This helped give a sense of large scale and allowed the stunt performers to do their best work within the shots. Suits for the superheroes that are featured in the movie were all updated and enhanced. Not only are they visually different, but the weight of the suits are also reduced with new materials for the actors to move more naturally on set. Their weapons and props were also updated with new tech for both the actors on set as well as for visual modifications. Full CG shots were created for the Black Panther who was introduced in the movie. Elaborate stunts and martial arts were choreographed to complement what was depicted in the comic books. To maintain the cohesiveness, the suit included elements from the comic books and the other superhero outfits shown in the film. The fight sequences between all of the superheroes consisted of a mix of practical costume and sets and CG doubles and enhancements. The sequence was planned out in 3D layout. The challenge was giving each hero their own moment to act and fight each other. They aimed to create one show-stopping moment during the highly anticipated epic battle sequence. They created an unexpected larger-than-life Ant-Man sequence to wow the audience. Hey class, to tell you a little bit about Class Creatives. We'll help you take your 3D and 2D art to the next level. Learn from industry professionals with experience teaching at accredited universities. Land that new job, receive higher pay, and stand out from the competition. The great thing about Class Creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. Get started today for free with the link in the description. In the first Avengers installment, sequences with Captain America in the city needed to be created on a set outside of New York due to scheduling of the principal actors. The New Mexico green screen is where the sequence was shot and finaled with visual effects from ILM. The time suits were entirely CGI created. The suits were a combination of Ant-Man, Iron Man, and Guardians of the Galaxy technology. Since the development of the suits was late in production, the costume department did not have time to fit and fabricate them so instead they were digitally created. For Captain America, a combination of practical and digital effects were used to create the aged look of Captain America. 
A body double was used to capture the physicality of the older Captain America. Digital effects were used to de-age Chris Evans' face and body. Everything except the bridge and a set of stairs was green screened and created in 3D. Avengers Endgame takes place within the decimated ruins of the Avengers compound. To create this environment, visual effects artists meticulously constructed a digital replica of the compound. The central crater floor was designed to accommodate the large-scale action sequences. Weta relied heavily on compositing techniques. The team meticulously blended live-action footage with CG elements, replacing entire sections when necessary to achieve the desired apocalyptic aesthetic. The film also required extensive CG character work, including crowd replacements and intricate suit replacements. Sony Pictures Imageworks was responsible for creating the visually dynamic battle sequence in the final episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. To achieve this, they developed a digital photoreal environment encompassing New York City, virtual vehicles, and digital doubles of various characters, including lead actor Anthony Mackie. A key focus was the creation of the photorealistic Digital Falcon, complete with a new suit, red wing and updated wing design. This digital asset provided filmmakers with the flexibility to envision and execute complex stunts that were not feasible through practical photography alone. Furthermore, this flexibility extended beyond filming, allowing for the creation of new exciting shots even after principal photography had concluded. The process began with a series of test shots, enabling the team to meticulously study and replicate the subtle nuances of weight balance and movement exhibited by the actor in the new suit and with the new wings. Subsequently, close collaboration with the filmmakers ensured the seamless integration of these digital assets culminating in the creation of thrilling aerial combat scenes that serve as an exciting climax for the series. They drew inspiration from real-world examples like wingsuit pilots, incorporating camera angles, and perspectives that mimic their experience. A key aspect was making Falcon's flight unique compared to other MCU characters like Iron Man. They achieved this by emphasizing different flight patterns and a distinct center of gravity for Falcon. They digitally removed seams in the costume to stay consistent with Marvel's rules for all superhero costumes to be seamless. Early in the filmmaking process, the team recognized the need for a complete digital reconstruction of the filming location. To achieve this, they employed extensive photogrammetry and LiDAR scanning across the entire movie set. This data was used to create a photorealistic digital representation of both the street intersection and the subterranean construction pit. The virtual construction pit offered significant cinematic flexibility. Filmmakers could easily adjust its dimensions to suit the requirements of each individual shot. For instance, to enhance the sense of peril and facilitate the execution of thrilling stunts, the digital pit was often lowered in scenes where live action shooting occurred at street level. To further enhance the realism of the digitally crafted locations, the team incorporated additional details. This included digital set dressing, the inclusion of digital crowds, and the integration of surrounding buildings to accurately replicate the distinctive urban feel of New York City. Sony Pictures Imageworks undertook the task of creating a fully digital, photorealistic representation of New York City. Using real-world data and meticulous attention to detail, they built a photorealistic environment complete with street-level details, moving traffic, and iconic landmarks. This digital city allowed filmmakers unparalleled creative freedom, enabling them to capture dynamic action sequences from any angle and altitude. The filmmakers sought to differentiate Red Hulk from the original Hulk, not just the color change, focusing on a more tactical and military approach, inspired by Thaddeus Ross's military background. They particularly included Ford's eyes in the design due to how important the features are to designing such an iconic character. The climactic fight between Red Hulk and Sam Wilson was a complex undertaking, involving extensive visual effects work and intricate choreography. Well, that about wraps up this video on how the Captain America movie franchise utilizes state-of-the-art visual effects tools such as Autodesk Maya to create one of the most iconic Marvel superheroes in the MCU and how state-of-the-art software workflows and practical effects are an important integral piece to the feature film creation process. All departments work together to bring something new to each installment of these franchises building upon the designs and CG enhancements from previous iterations. The newest entry in the series looks better than ever. Will you be watching in theaters on release day? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And 
uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Perfect.